Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, this is Will, the Dragon Whisperer, with another video from a YouTube channel. Sorry it's been a while since I posted you guys, work's been really busy, and I've been doing a lot of work here in the reptile room. I was fortunate enough to go to Repticon in Charlotte a couple weeks back, and Morph Menageries, another shout out to those guys, Gabby, awesome people, and I was able to procure some new reptiles at the show, as well as get up with her later and procure a couple more animals from her for my breeding projects. Also adopted a few more animals off of Craigslist and can't wait to show you those guys. Some new enclosures I got and some breeding projects I'm working on. So I also was able recently to get my website up. Um, I'm trying to get my online reptile store going. So right now I just have a few animals posted but I'm going to post the website at the bottom you guys. It's kakalakiexoticcreations.com. No E on exotic, spelled with X-O-T-I-C, Kakalaki, ExoticCreations.com. Guys, please check out the website. There'll be a lot more animals posted in the future that I will have for sale and be looking for new homes. So I hope you guys like the video. We're going to be doing a tour of the whole room, all the enclosures, all the animals. Hope you enjoy it. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Comment in the section below. Here we go. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you um, start off with some of my enclosures and my animals. Now, as you can see on this tank, I've got me a label maker and I have all the names of my animals on the top of the tanks as well as the common name and the scientific names on the bottom corners of all my tanks. But this is Clementine's enclosure. Definitely need to add some things. She was just adopted off of Craigslist very recently. Really gracious, awesome owners, um, super nice people. Um, really great uh, opportunity I had to adopt Clementine. But this is her enclosure. I'm going to be putting ceramic tiles in here, but for right now she has the mat and I don't have a background. She does have a cling to separate her from the other dragons so that they don't uh, rile each other up. Okay guys, this is Clarabelle. She is a five month old female bearded dragon. You can see she is a leatherback, beautiful colors. Uh, her blue's a little faded right now because I think she is about to start a shed. Um, but incredible personality and look at that red beard. She has the most beautiful red beard. Uh, and look like she's holding on to me there. Um, but she's a beautiful girl beautiful leatherback five-year-old female i'm going to be breeding her um with ramses uh very soon here in the near future and uh hopefully have some beautiful blue bar leatherbacks but that is miss clementine say hey sweetie <laughs> now this is my newest baby bearded dragon um this is the khaleesi and uh, as you can see here, and this is her little enclosure. She loves her hammock and uh, her little tree there and loves to climb around on her log. She's got her little salad in there. And I um, just want to show you guys, I really am religious about moving the stuff around the enclosure and making sure that everything is proper. You know, a child needs to have, a baby bearded dragon needs to have a temperature of about 105 to 110 for basking area. And as you can see right here, her tree uh, is 105, 110, maybe one little hot spot there. But uh, babies can have basking spots up to 115, so that's not an issue for her at all. She'll thermoregulate and she'll get where on that tree she wants to be when she needs to digest her food. That is the Khaleesi's enclosure. Now this is the baby, the Khaleesi. Uh, she has some beautiful colors um, as you can see she has some really unique orange in her spikes on her side there and I do believe a lot of that gray will turn blue as she gets older I've sexed her as a female but I've made the mistake before so I'm gonna resex her in a couple weeks uh, she, it's kind of her bedtime her lights just turned off she's trying to nuzzle into my hand to go to sleep but she is adorable maybe four or five weeks old uh, the pets, I just got her at, actually at a pet store because she was in the tank all by herself and I went there a couple times that week and uh, she was there the whole week by herself in the tank so I didn't want to leave her alone anymore and decided to take her home. I had the extra tank, I had the feeders because I have colonies 
uh, so it wasn't going to really cost me anything extra except her price at PetSmart. Uh, and they like to say their animals are four weeks old, but I've seen hatchlings, and she couldn't have been more than maybe two weeks old when I got her. So but that is the Khaleesi, beautiful little baby bearded dragon. Now here we have the Euromastix enclosure, one of my uh, recent adoptions from Craigslist as well. Um, he is an orange. I'm not sure if he's a Niger or Saharan Euromastix, but uh, I have named him Pyro because when you see him, he's a beautiful orange and black color. He has a cool area over here, and as you will see, um, this area is around 80 degrees or so. Uh, he's got a nice little place he can climb under, some greens there, as well as some uh, lentils. They like These guys like to eat seeds and beans. And then over here, I have kind of a little rock divider with his substrate. And these guys require a lot hotter basking temperature. And as you'll see here, I've got his rock around 135 to 140. He has different areas um, that he can go to that are a little cooler than others. Um, over here, he's got about 125 over there in the back 128 um, but he's got a very broad range as you'll see it gets down to 100 then over here he's back into the 80s so he's got a large temperature gradient that's a 50 degree difference from over here to over here um, which is ideal for these guys um, that's exactly what you want uh, type of enclosure got the gauges there his substrate stays pretty dry and I don't have him in here right now because he's really nervous, hard to get out of his little hole. He wedges himself in there like a champ. Uh, so I've got him in a separate little enclosure so I can show him to you guys. I didn't want to have to try to uh, drag him out of there uh, on the video. So you guys will be seeing him shortly. Now this guy's is my Euromastix uh, Pyro. <laughs> what a beautiful guy. Actually, he's going through shed. That's nothing wrong with him right there, guys. He's just going through shed. And since these guys, they can go years without drinking water. They live in one of the most ridiculously inhospitable environments in the world. Um, we're talking about 130 to 140 degrees on the rocks. Uh, not a single plant within hundreds of yards uh, or even miles. Um, and once again, people think these guys live in sand. They live on hard scrabble and rocks. Uh, there i've seen dave kaufman video he goes right to their habitat and there's literally no sand it is nothing but rock there's not any water for miles uh, and these guys can live in that environment uh, he has such a beautiful bright orange color i'm sure when he sheds he's going to look amazing and the people i got this guy from said they don't like to be handled um, but all the research i've said said they are very similar to bearded dragons uh, clint from clint's reptiles actually says that he, he gives this guy like a, a couple tenths of a point better score than bearded dragons because they don't eat live feeder insects and he considers their temperament and their handability and their care very similar uh, other than the, the, the more heat that they require. Uh, but look at this tail. You're talking about something prehistoric and I don't want him to jump out of my hand. Uh, like I said, this guy's been really skittish since I got him. I don't think he was handled much uh, because his previous owners didn't think he enjoyed it. But I don't think these guys mind handling at all if you do it on a regular basis and uh, get them bonded with you. Um, but see this guy, uh, the first 24 hours I had him, he was very wound up, would not let me hold him, tried to continuously run out of my hands. But as you can see right here, I've just spent 24 hours talking to this guy. I've held him multiple times, um, put my hand in his enclosure, um, and I mean, we, me and him have already bonded. This guy's attitude compared to 24 hours ago is ridiculous and I hope his former owners watch the video and they'll see that this guy's um, hopefully <laughs> this guy will be tamed down here very soon and uh, won't mind me handling him but once again look at that tail I mean prehistoric these guys can wedge themselves in rocks and the way this tail is then a predator cannot drag him out they can actually inflate their body uh, and wedge themselves in there uh, but that is Pyro, my Euromastix. Say hey to your fans, Pyro. Now this is Miss Clara Bell. She's a four-year-old female bearded dragon. This is her setup. I do have some ceramic tiles. I have not had them custom cut yet. 
so that they lay flat. Uh, so I've got them overlapped a little bit, but the tile really helps with their nails and really helps with the uh, um, the radiation of heat and um, they hold heat really well and the best part is the cleanup. Uh, if you guys have dragons, you'll know their poop is not always the friendliest, smelliest, or easiest to clean up. And uh, depending on how many vegetables or fruits they've eaten, it can be quite the runny mess. And uh, the tile is such a godsend when it comes to cleaning that mess up. So she has her log and a little stair there because she's kind of a big girl. Helps her get up into her hammock. Um, her salad bowl, water bowl that she never drinks out of, but I have it there just in case. And as you can see, she has multiple spots here. Um, she can get over 100, around 100 degrees here on her little tree. And then uh, up, up around 90, uh, 5 or so. But then up here on her tree, she's a nice... Uh, actually that's what not a good reading um, we got 105 right there where she's basking which is ideal uh, for these guys so um, that is Miss Clarabelle's enclosure this is Clarabelle she is my two-year-old female bearded dragon um, she is a big girl very healthy as you can see um, and Clarabelle is, uh, quite the healthy girl, um, big, beautiful head on Clarabelle, um, but she is another dragon that's super, super docile, um, great personality, loves to cuddle and watch TV, she loves her salad, has got a little bit of shed, Clarabelle sheds in portions, as you can see, part of her back, right here is hazing over Turn around baby part of her oh she's not cooperating come here clarabelle but part of her back right here as you can see is hazing over and then right here she has a little spot that's shedding but she sheds in random spots it's kind of funny but she is a beautiful beautiful dragon her pattern's incredible those, those designs down her back she's getting a little antsy but that is Miss Clarabelle. What a cutie. Say hi to all your fans. Now here we have Ramses. Um, he is about to be one year old in September. Birthday coming up, big boy. And to be honest, I don't like to say I have a favorite, but this guy, he, I love this guy. When I got him, he was super aggressive. The people told me he was friendly that I adopted him from off of Craigslist. Got him about three months ago, and he was black beard, aggressive, super territorial, did not like to be touched, did not like to be picked up. And now me and this guy are super good friends. Um, he loves to be taken in the car. He loves to go to PetSmart. He loves to sit with me on the couch. He just got through shedding on the back of his head, so he was a little ornery the last few days, but this guy, I mean, <laughs> me and him have gotten to be buddies. I mean, literally the dude is almost my best friend. Um, took him to the beach with me. I mean, uh, I'm not supposed to have favorites, but Ramsey's kind of is. And as you can see, his enclosure, he has this nice tree he's basking on. I'm sure the temperatures are great. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, 101 right there in front of his paws, or his claws. He loves to hug his tree, I love that. And uh, he has a rock there that he also loves to bask on. His little stairway to his hammock, water bowl. He doesn't ever leave much in his salad bowl. He's a good eater, so. But uh, that's Mr. Ramsey's enclosure. Now this is kind of the pride of my room, Mr. Ramsey's. He is so incredibly awesome and gorgeous. Uh, and he's not even a year old yet. I mean, I hate that this guy is about to go into another shed because he's growing like a beast. Um, but uh, he is a blue bar and his colors are super bright. But he's already starting to fade and haze over because he's beginning to start a shed. Um, he just shed the very back of his head. Um, he kind of sheds in sections, but he will do his whole back. But he just shed his beard and part of his head. But uh, you can tell he's about to change. But his blue is so vibrant. His orange is almost like a, a spree candy. Uh, he's beautiful. And I'm going to be breeding him with Miss Clementine in the very near future. And this guy's going to be a proud papa. 
Say hey to all your fans, Mr. Ramses. Okay, guys, this is my baby boy, and if you guys have watched my earlier videos, uh, I sexed this thing. It was the first bearded dragon I ever tried to sex as a baby, and I knew what to look for, and I thought she was a girl. So I named her Arya uh, because she was super feisty, super aggressive feeding response, very ca uh, calm and timid when you held her, but just her feeding response, and she was very active, never aggressive at all, but just her spunk and personality. Arya fit her so perfectly. Anybody who knows Games of Thrones and knows Arya, she's one of my favorite characters. Uh, you know, dynamite in a small package, and so about three weeks ago, I just on a whim decided to sex it again because it was starting to head bob and show some uh, male behavior and characteristics. So I resexed her, and she was a boy. So now Arya is Apollo. This is the first bearded dragon I got as a baby. She's probably five months old now. Um, he is probably five months old. I'm so sorry, Apollo. Uh, I keep wanting to call it a girl because I have for months. Um, but please forgive me. But this is his enclosure. Uh, I really kind of regret that I bought this grass bridge instead of a rock bridge because it sheds this grass all over his enclosure all the time. And I'm afraid he's going to eat it and think it's lettuce. But so far, it hasn't been an issue. I vacuum it constantly to try to get up the little pieces. And I vacuum it to get anything loose uh, to try to keep that from happening. But he loves it, loves to climb on it, loves to sand on it. Um, here's the salad bowl and oftentimes he'll sleep inside of his little cave and uh, try to dig in there uh, a lot of times I hear him scratching in there in the corner but I will not put any of my dragons on sand anyone who wants to comment I'll be happy to go rounds with you because that is a terrible substrate for your dragons that's one thing I'll be happy to argue about with you if you want to argue about it because raising your dragons on sand is terrible they don't they don't live on sand in the wild watch Dave Kaufman's videos um, Everyone thinks desert, they think sand. Um, there's places in Australia where you couldn't get a Ziploc bag full of sand in 500 square yards. It's all packed hard like concrete and rocks, hard scrabble. There is no sand. These guys do not live on sand in the wild and it can cause impaction. It's not worth it. It may look pretty in your tank. They might like to dig around in it and you think they're happy. It's terrible for your dragons. Do not raise them on sand. That being said, <laughs> that's Arya's enclosure. All right, guys, this is Apollo, the dragon, formerly known as Arya. <laughs> and this is my baby. I raised him from a small little three, four week old first uh, dragon I got. And um, she's only about six months old now, but growing like a beast. She, I call her young savage because she never misses a meal and she never hits uh Nothing hits the deck in her enclosure without her hitting the deck and going straight for it. It doesn't matter what she's doing. Uh, she's straight after the food. She never hesitates at all. The most incredible feeding response of any of my animals. Um, she is, he is a beast. Please forgive me, little dude. I keep calling you a girl, but I've done it for four months now. It's hard not to. But this is Mr. Apollo. And he's already started to head bob. And he's the king of the room. He's the king of the dragons. He had Bob's, the other male, uh, definitely is not afraid of him. Uh, Ramses went the other way the one time I let him interact. Um, and this guy, he shows dominance to everything in the room. Uh, he runs up to everybody's tanks and head Bob's every tank he can get to. Uh, this guy, <laughs> he's kind of a bully, but I love my little dude. And that's Apollo. Okay, I apologize for the reflection and the sound of my water features and the filter on my fish tank, but there's not really anything I can do about Even if I turn the water feature off, you're going to hear the fish tank filter, so there's really no point. This is Cheech's enclosure. Um, this is my leopard gecko. I'm sure he's hiding in his little cave right now, and it's right over top of his heat mat where he loves to sleep. It's nice and warm there, about 90 degrees or so. See, he's got some super worms and roaches still in his bowl he hasn't eaten. And those of you who raise uh, leopard geckos will know they like to have just straight calcium without D3 uh, in a little bowl. They like to eat it, play in it. Uh, those of you who think his enclosure is dirty, it's not. It's because Cheech tracks his uh, calcium all over the place. And that cork bark... 
Uh, those of you who raise leopard geckos will know that they like to have a humid hide, especially when they're shedding. So I spray that hide, the inside of it, till it's pretty soaking wet uh, every day, just in case he wants to get in somewhere with a little humidity and dampness, he can. And those of you who want to question, uh, I, I've tried to find the video and I cannot find it. I don't know what has happened to it, but leopard geckos do drink out of a water bowl. I have a night vision camera and I have had a recording i can't like i said i can't find it where my leopard gecko was drinking actively out of that bowl so they definitely drink out of a water bowl when and if they need it so but that's cheech's enclosure my leopard gecko okay guys this is cheech my leopard gecko just woke cheech up so he's not quite sure what's going on uh cheech definitely has a little bit of a vision problem i think he uh is uh either an albino or I haven't really been able to distinguish the morph he has I haven't seen another leopard gecko like him he doesn't have really any spots and he's a really pale yellow uh, and pink his uh, coloration is changing a little as he gets older and he's starting to develop some spots uh, on his head but they're all white <laughs> so uh, I'm not really exactly sure what morph or what type of leopard gecko Mr. Cheech is, but he's adorable. Nice fat tail. Um, it definitely has some vision problems. Doesn't always see his food and uh, stumbles around quite a lot. <laughs> but that's Mr. Cheech. Say hey to your fans. Okay, this is my 18 by 18 by 24 um front door open in exoterra and this enclosure houses my two female uh breeder geckos um there is sansa in here and since i had to rename my bearded dragon that i thought was a girl aria uh apollo um i renamed this female breeder gecko that i got she is now named aria um she was named stumpy when i got her but I just didn't think Stumpy fit for a female. So I renamed her Aria because of all my reptiles, other than my Tokays, she is the only one that has ever bitten me. And it, I think it's because she's pregnant, she is gravid, but uh, she jumped off my arm one time and I reached down to pick her up from above and she may very well thought I was a predator, but she got me pretty good. And uh, so she definitely deserved the name Aria. So now she is the new Aria. Uh, but this is their enclosure, the bamboo sticks, big nice piece of cork in the back, their little food ledge. They love that hide. There's one or the other in it all the time, their little rock ledge hide with their digital gauges. And as you can see, their humidity is a little low right now. You want it between 60 and 80, but it's close to their bedtime. So uh, you want it to dry out a little bit right before you missed it uh, in the evening. And they have a drainage layer as well as a screen. So keep the substrate out of the drainage layer and any excess water will go down there. Uh, they have springtails in there. It's not bioactive fully, but they do have a live pothos plant uh, in the front and back there in the corner, a live spider plant, which is definitely struggling right now. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong there. Um, but that is Sansa and Aria's enclosure. Now this is one of my leopard geckos, and this one is Gravid. Uh, this is one of my recent acquisitions from Morph Menagerie. Sorry, couldn't speak there, guys. And uh, look at the pinstripes on her all the way down to that beautiful V. She's even got some spikes on her side here. Beautiful Harlequin pattern. Um, she's definitely a little fired up right now. Um, but this is a beautiful girl. And she's gravid. Should be laying eggs any day now. I just actually checked her tank today. So this girl should be laying eggs any day now. Beautiful spikes though on her. Beautiful, beautiful gecko. And this is Aria. This is the the one that I renamed after the bearded dragon that turned out to be a male because Aria is the only gecko that has ever bitten me. <laughs> like I said, she is gravid, so I'll forgive her. Say hey to your friends, Aria. Now this is Sansa. She is fired down right now. It's kind of funny. One gecko fired up and the other one fired down. They're in the same tank. 
But uh, she has a beautiful Harleyman pattern too, but you can't see it because she's completely fired down right now. Almost a, a lavender, light, light gray. Uh, but normally that's all dark black when she's fired up. She gets really dark. But this is Sansa, beautiful breeder, female. She laid a clutch of infertile eggs, which should have been her last eggs for this season. Um, so after a couple months of <laughs> after a couple months of recovery, Mr. Sansa is going to be getting bred with Mr. Tyrion. But she's a beautiful, big, healthy gecko, and that's Miss Sansa. Say hey to your fans, sweetie. Okay, guys, this is the enclosure that is shared by. Maddie and Ozzy, my two toke geckos, which is funny, their scientific name is Gecko Gecko. So, uh, this is their enclosure, nice substrate, not bioactive, but they do have springtails in there and some pillow moss, plenty of vines, a little bit of color in there, a little piece of uh, grapevine wood there, nice little hide that they like to sit on top of, but they don't really like to get inside. And, um, big huge piece of cork bark uh, that you can see there and these guys usually love to hang out on the back wall thought maybe I would catch one of them but they're probably behind the cork bark they usually tend to hide back in this area uh, you can just barely make out Maddie there can't really see her because of the reflection but um, that is the Toke geckos enclosure and they do like to have a little bit of a heat spot so I do have a heating element there that keeps the top of their little hide around 90 to 94 degrees just in case they uh, they do want to bask and they, they do get up there quite often uh, and enjoy that little spot but that is the toke gecko enclosure hey guys this is my male toke gecko as you can see, he's trying his dang just to bite me. Uh, and his bite does not feel good. Uh, he, if he could get around there to get my finger, he would, he would have me for sure. Um, he's trying to get loose. Look at him. He's trying to get a hold. Oh, he just bit the hell out of me. <laughs> he just bit the heck out of me. He just bit me again pretty good. He's biting me multiple times right there, as you can see. But I want you guys to be able to see. This is Ozzy, my male Toke Gecko. And as you can see, quite the personality. He's so super friendly. He's trying his best to bite my finger off. Uh, lucky I have these gloves on. Finally, he gave up. Um, hopefully, you guys can please focus. But that is Ozzy. He looks a little rough for wear because him and Maddie have been breeding. But these guys are beautiful. He's wild caught from Thailand. Just bred him. And I'm hoping that the babies will be a lot more friendly because I'm gonna to try to hang tame them uh, from babies. But this is a male, he's got a big head, uh, definitely just at least quite a few uh, nice bites on me. Hopefully those didn't leave a mark. So I'm gonna put him back into the enclosure now, but this is Ozzy. Say hey to your fans, Ozzy. I've had these on in a few of my videos, but I just didn't feel like y'all have been able to take in the full grandeur and splendor and fantasticness of the Carolina Tar Heel Jordan Six Rings. Whew. I just wanted y'all to be able to see the awesomeness and the fantasticness of those freaking kicks. Now guys, this is Maddie, my female Toke Gecko. There you go, the focus in now. Now I'm not gonna hand handle her. I did handle her to put her into this uh, carrier so that I could show you guys better on the video, but I am not going to handle her right now. I'm gonna try to put her back into her enclosure without actually, without actually touching Maddie because she is very gravid right now. She is pregnant with lots, or at least two Toke babies, um, hopefully multiple eggs. Um, but that is Maddie. 
I just don't want to stress her out and handle her right now because she's going to go nuts. Um, she's already crazy. And then just a magnet of pregnant woman times Toke Gecko. Um, sorry about the reflection there. So Maddie is shell as can be right now. She bit me so many times getting her into this enclosure. So I'm not going to handle her, not for my uh, safety, but just because I don't want to stress her out because she is pregnant. So that is Maddie, my beautiful wild caught female Toke Gecko. Okay guys, <clears throat> this is Snoozy's enclosure. Uh, he's about five months old, flame crested gecko. Um, Springtail's teaming in his enclosure. They've really taken off in there. Um, but he has the nice piece of cork bark, his vine, a little piece of wood that I've sterilized, and this little piece of log uh, corner hide there. Um, and he has the tube where the uh, foggers are piped in there. So this is Mr. Snoozy's enclosure. Okay guys, this is Snoozy, another one of my crested geckos. Um, this was just about old enough to sex now, and I'm not... <laughs> Snoozy does not like to be touched like the other adults I have yet. Snoozy's very, very jumpy. Um, but it doesn't really look like Snoozy's uh, developing a bulge. So, I think Snoozy is a girl. Look at that face. How could you not love that face? What an adorable gecko. But Snoozy loves her, her or his insects. Every animal, I mean every insect I've given Snoozy, uh, feeding response has been incredible. Loves them. Loves roaches, loves crickets. Um, so Snoozy, but Snoozy's very, very jumpy. Snoozy's always active, even if I wake him up in the middle of the night, it doesn't matter. Snoozy is super, super active, but beautiful flame gecko. That Snoozy is going to be one of my breeders when he or she gets old enough. This is Shadow's enclosure. He is a six to seven month old emperor scorpion. Hard to age those guys. He has also a drainage layer and a screen. Um, I'm sure he's hiding there under his little rock ledge, but I am going to get him out and let you guys see him. But this is an enclosure. He has numerous hides as well as this little water dish in the corner with a sponge that I keep wet just in case he needs hydration. So that is Shadow's enclosure. Now here is Shadow, you guys. I'm not going to handle Shadow right now because he's actually going through a molt. And uh, that's the one time you really don't want to handle them. And not because they could sting me or um, be more aggressive, which they may be, uh, but it's just I don't want to hurt him or hurt uh, the parts of his exoskeleton that he's trying to shed. Um, just don't want to disturb that process right now. Uh, anybody who's seen my earlier <coughs> videos knows that I handle these guys and let them walk all over me. Um, I, I let them back up on the me stinger first. So has nothing to do with me not wanting to pick the guy up just because it's not healthy for him right now. Um, his, his glow in the black light is pretty intense. Um, but I want you guys to see Shadow. I'll look him up so he's not happy either. But beautiful Emperor Scorpion. I wish you guys could see, maybe it was in them. They have an incredible pattern, almost like a scroll work uh, on their pedipalps. You can just kind of make it out there a little bit. As he gets older, it will get more defined. But that's Mr. Shadow. Here we have Mr. Tyrion's enclosure. Um, a lot of Game of Thrones names in my reptile room. I know, guys. Um, he has the 12 by 12 by 18 Exoterra. He's going to be one of my breeders here soon. I'm just waiting for one of my females is gravid and already laying eggs. The other female is on a little break from uh, being bred from the person that I got her from. So a couple more months when she's recovered and Mr. Tyrion uh, will be breeding with her. But this is an enclosure. That is actually a cork log. He loves to get inside of it. It's hollow inside. Um, and he loves to climb around on his vines. Lots and lots of foliage in there for Mr. Tyrion. And all my geckos have uh, foggers piped in. I have a piping system that runs behind my racks 
uh, with valves so I can uh, pipe the fog to individual tanks uh, if some need it more than others. Um, so that is Mr. Tyrion's enclosure. Okay guys, this is Tyrion. Looks very similar to Sansa when he's not fired up except his Harlequin pattern is definitely a lot different and you can tell that uh, he's a male by his bulge there. Uh, so that's the telltale sign of a male Toke Gecko, but Tyrion's <clears throat> put on some weight since I got him. He was a rescue, um, looking really good, nice and healthy boy. Still haven't gotten to really take insects. Uh, he was a couple years old when I got him, and maybe he was just never fed insects before because he doesn't seem to be very interested in them. But uh, this is Mr. Tyrion, my beautiful male crested gecko, going to be one of my breeders. Say hey to your fans, Tyrion. Okay, guys, this is Cinder's enclosure. Uh, Cinder is my Asian forest scorpion, and I'm sure he's in this big rock hide here. He actually likes to curl up inside of the kind of the top of it uh, instead of in the substrate. He actually gets up in the kind of the top of the thing there. Um, but that's his enclosure. He has multiple hides uh, as well as a water bowl with a sponge there in case he needs hydration. Um, want to give your scorpions at least two to three hides. Uh, they really like to stay in their hides pretty much all the time. They'll come out and hunt at night, but they only eat about once a month or so. So uh, a lot of times you won't see these guys for days and days at a time unless you really just want to go in there and interact with them. But uh, if you're looking for an animal that you're going to see and watch, uh, definitely not these guys. I haven't seen this guy in probably a week, uh, but I'm going to get him out and show him to you guys. This guy is my Asian forest scorpion. Um, cinder, as you can see, pretty big guy. Um, like I said, I let these guys walk on me. They're not aggressive. Uh, usually only sting if they uh, feel like they're threatened from above. They have really poor eyesight as well. But that cinder, my Asian forest scorpion. Grows incredible in the black light. Okay guys, this dude is kind of a fan favorite. This is my big tiger Oscar boss hog. And uh, there is his uh, common and scientific name. Um, but as you can see, I upgraded him. If you've seen my last videos, he was in a 20 gallon, but he was getting so big. And look at him there for the video. He's gonna swim right through his house. That is so perfect. This guy is straight ham. Like, he loves the camera. He loves attention. I've never seen a fish with as much personality as this dude. Like, he knows I'm talking about him right now. Check him out. Yeah, boss hog, you're a star. Uh, he doesn't even want to show you that he's got a little bit of ick. Uh, those of you who know about fish, it's a parasitic disease they can get. I gave him some feeder fish, got them from a pet store, should have known better. Uh, apparently one of them had the parasite because it has to be introduced into your tank. There you can see the little white patch there. Um, but I've got some medicine there for him. You actually have to take your carbon filters out of your filtration system or your filters will take the medicine out of the water. Uh, but he's already got his second dose of it. I can tell it's already starting to clear up. Um, actually, they can, they can cure, they can get rid of it with their own immune system if they're healthy which I'm sure he he's quite the beast but uh I wanted to give him all the help I could so uh, he has the ick treatment in there with him right now he's definitely doing better but uh Mr. Boss Hog hey, look he knows um look he's such a ham for the camera look at him like he would normally be hiding but he knows he wants to be star of the show <clears throat> but that's Boss Hogs enclosure, he's got the white sand in there, big 55 gallon. He has the uh, marine life. I really like these, it's a bio wheel. Um, those things actually turn uh, as the water pours over them and the bacteria kind of cultures in there and uh, cleans the waste out of his water. Uh, got the volcano going, um, but uh, really happy with this filtration system and this tank. I bought it as a complete setup and uh, it's been really, really well.
Now you guys will see what's actually inside of these enclosures when I show off the individual animals. These guys are some of the animals I have listed on my website as well as animals that are part of future breeding projects. Um, just put this little shelving system up in the last couple days. Really strong, really sturdy. Um, still need to paint the screw heads and washers there black so they kind of match with everything else. But um, got some crested geckos, gargoyle gecko, leechianus geckos in these tanks. And I'll be showing you guys each one of those uh, individually and showing you what the inside of their enclosures look like. Also, there's a website called roundvents.com. Um, encourage you guys to check it out if uh, if you breed or have any kind of system like this these guys sell these um, little round vents here you can get them in all different sizes uh, you just cut a hole and they they pop in and the tabs hold them in place excellent uh, ventilation to turn any kind of tote into a great enclosure um, especially for babies or for breeding projects uh, so like I said roundvents.com if anybody's interested I'll post it on the screen check them out Okay guys, this is one of my baby crested geckos. I have not put this guy on the website yet, but he will be very soon. Uh, as soon as I get some good pictures of this guy, he will be on the website. Beautiful flame, whoa, there he goes. Beautiful flame, got a little harlequin pattern on the side not really fired up right now so you can't really see it but this guy is adorable beautiful big head nice markings got a few dalmatian spots so if you guys know anything about the jeans there's some more of those dalmatian spots if you guys know anything about the jeans that is a morph and uh it will um it will show up in uh the breeding of this guy um that is a specific gene uh, if they have any spots at all, then they have the Dalmatian gene. Um, you can breed two Dalmatians and have a super Dalmatian. And actually, Altitude Exotics, if you guys check those out, they have some incredible super ink spot Dalmatians that just have huge, giant ink blotches on them. But this uh, is a cutie. Can't sex it because it's way too small right now. Um, so it has does not have a name. But this uh, little guy will be on the website uh, in the next day or two. So uh, check it out if anybody's interested. Okay guys, this is another one of my small little enclosures with uh, cork bark. I use bottle caps uh, for their food. Works really good. Small little dishes. That way I can put multiple feeding spots in here for the babies. They all have uh, two or three of those uh, in their enclosures. Um, just using paper towel for the for the babies right now for substrate um, And this is a beautiful orange blotch gargoyle. She is uh, on my website uh, Right now for sale uh, So you guys check her out and she is completely fired up if you see the pictures on the website. She is super super pale almost a whitish gray uh, When she's fired down almost the color you see on her arms there in the really light stripes that's what color she is all over with the orange blotches uh, when she's fired down. Uh, but right now she is definitely fired up. But beautiful, beautiful little girl. She's very active too. Um, but that's my little gargoyle. And like I said, she is available on the website if anyone is interested. Okay guys, this is another one of my little baby enclosures uh, for my breeding project. This is another little baby I have. Uh, pretty sure this guy is on the website already. Um, yes, this guy is definitely on the website. He is an extreme flame. Look at the beautiful markings on this guy's head. Uh, just super incredible. He is looking for a place to jump. Uh, but incredible Harlequin pattern. Even has some whites in there. Um, beautiful flame, partial pinstripe. Uh, I call this guy an extreme flame, um, but he is beautiful. Look at him go. I haven't named him yet, but like I said, this guy is available on the website. Okay, here is another one of my small baby breeding project geckos. And this little guy is, or girl, is also already up on the website and 
she is an extreme pinstripe beautiful got some orange on her and just extreme pinstripe even has some pinstriping uh, and some spotting uh, look at, uh, some spikes on the side look at those pinstripes incredible and uh, beautiful little dark blotch on the head there and this little girl's on the website she actually right there you can see she has some of the drips that's another morph gene beautiful spots right there beside of her dorsal fin can't really see them as good because she's fired down but uh she has the drip morph as well let me try to get her before she gets away from me so this is that little girl like i said she has drip morph too um some beautiful little spots right along her side they're just hard to see and she also has the dalmatian gene she does have a few spots and um so she does have the dalmatian gene and she is an extreme pinstripe harlequin with dalmatian this little dude has multiple morphs and great would be a great breeder just jumped onto my other hand but anybody who's interested in this little dude, he is on the website. Available. Okay, guys. I know I said Ramsey's was uh, the pride of my room, but these guys are my new favorites. Uh, this is Shrek, my Lichianus Gecko that I just got from Morph Menagerie at Repticon. This guy is freaking amazing. He is so beautiful. Uh, he's going to have some amazing pattern and spotting and stripes on him when he gets older. You can see here these guys have a tail that almost looks like a regen, but it's not. But these guys get big, like almost the size of a small bearded dragon. They are called the New Caledonian Giant Gecko or Lichianus Gecko. Um, and this is the male. Um, he, I've named him Shrek. Oh, my camera keeps getting out of focus. Um, it doesn't know which to focus on the leaves or Shrek. But this guy is amazing. And I'm definitely going to hopefully have some Lichianus babies. Uh, maybe a year and a half, two years down the road. But um, that is Mr. Shrek. My male Lichianus gecko. And he is... Uh, Pine Island, uh, his mom and dad were both Pine Island, which is the largest of the uh, island uh, locales and subspecies. Um, he, he is, should be a pretty big um, Lichianus as he, uh, when he gets older. So that's Mr. Shrek. Now this, you guys, is hopefully Shrek's future soulmate. This is Fiona, and as you can see, her camouflage is incredible, and she loves lounging on this log. Um, I mean, look at the color. She's got some beautiful orange, uh, pinkish uh, coloration there that I'm hoping will brighten up as she gets older. Um, but she, her, her camouflage is incredible, and look at those eyes, the lychee eyes. The older they get, the more incredibly look. It's like black lightning bolts going through uh, a gray uh, pupil with a, a gray iris with a beautiful, uh, excuse me, I can't talk now. <laughs> the black little slit there through the middle. Um, anyway, the eyes are pretty incredible. And uh, But that is Fiona, my Lichianus gecko, future breeder. And uh, when she does breed her babies, will be available on the website. She has some beautiful little curl type uh, markings right there that go up between her eyes. Very dragon-esque. Um, but that is Miss Fiona. I'm not gonna pick her up and disturb her right now. She's happy in her little enclosure. And once again with the little round vents uh, in the end, make great little enclosures for these guys while they're babies. Say hey to your fans, Fiona. 
Okay, guys, that wraps it up. This is Will the Dragon Whisperer. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. Please comment in the section below if you have any questions or comments. I really enjoyed showing you guys my enclosures and all my animals and the species that I have. Um, hope you guys will tune in to my future videos. And I'm out.